concept we're going to cover really quickly is talking about income. So income is definitely one of those concepts in econ and in generally in life that I'm sure you guys are pretty interested about. Um, it's definitely something that you will encounter as you go forward into the workforce as you get older. Uh, and those discussions of, you know, what kind of income do you want to have um, also revolves around, well, what kind of background do you have to have? What kind of skills do you need? Um, what does it take to achieve that income level? So um, that's what we're going to talk about today. Um, I will just tell you before I get into it that, yes, this presentation, uh, there's not a whole lot to it. it it's pretty cut and dry. Um, it was part of a longer income slash entrepreneurship um, slideshow, but I made a copy and just cut this down to just income alone to try to uh, make it a little bit more smaller, condensed, uh, and, and quicker for you guys to look through. Um, next week, we'll deal with entrepreneurship, which will be the back half of this. Uh, but for now, I just want to just focus on income alone. So here we go. Um, real quick, these questions you'll see are already kind of part of uh, the attendance question for the week. So uh, I'll just skip through that. So a little bit of background. Okay, income is not just money on paper. All right, you're also talking about things that would impact income itself. Well, you're talking about human capital, all right? That's the knowledge and skills that people obtain through education, experience, and training. Um, people are able to invest their human capital by going to school. You can talk about apprenticeships, additional training, skills through practice, you name it. Human capital plays an enormous role in income, and I'll kind of talk about that in a minute, but just know that if you put more into yourself and kind of get that professional development through education, apprenticeships, practical experience, you're going to be better off in the long run when it comes to your own income. So that's where this point comes into play. Well, in general, people who have more skills, more education, more training, more practical experience tend to be more productive. And ultimately, if you're more productive, if you're achieving your work at a higher level, uh, you more than likely can achieve a higher income. So recap that real quick. I know this is kind of like blazing speed. There's only a couple slides, but really I just want to kind of hammer at home human capital you're talking about knowledge skills experience people obtain through education training experience uh, investment in human capital again it's the effort you would actually go ahead and put into acquiring and improving human capital maybe you're a little deficient in terms of a certain set of skills well if you invest in those skills and, and try to learn more and become better at whatever your deficiency is well that's an investment in human capital um, and again, that kind of leads into that third point there. Well, how do you invest in human capital? We're talking about the three big ones, education, experience, and training. It's not always just education. It can be experience and training as well. And a lot of fields um, don't necessarily have to do with education. You can definitely get to uh, higher levels of income and proficiency and experience through um, on-the-job, hands-on type of training. So... Here comes into play. Well, how how does investment in human capital through education affect income? Because ultimately, when people think about higher income brackets and kind of achieving those uh, higher incomes annually, well, a lot of that does have to do with education. I'm not saying that's always the case, but more times than not, it is. Um, so in a general sense, there is a positive relationship between the amount of education people have and the amount of income they earn. So basically, if you have more education, if you're getting more degrees, if you're kind of rising up the ladder of higher education, the more likely you are um, to achieve a greater income annually. All right. But again, I'm not saying that's universal. That's not always the case. Um, and I don't want those of you who think that you absolutely have to go up through higher education to believe that that's the only route. I'm just saying in a general sense, if you are higher educated, you do have a better chance. Again, that's not universal. That's not always the case. But in a general sense, that is the trend. Well, why is that the case? So this comes to the rationale part. You have to think about what the employers are looking for, what businesses are looking for, what industry you're looking for. And again, not 100% the case, but it's a, it's a trend. So in general, those who invest more in human capital and have more skills and are, more, are in general sense more likely to be productive. You have more knowledge, you have more experience, you have more uh, practical training. You just, you are able to be more productive through your background. Um, and as a result, if you think about, you know, worker A versus worker B, if worker A has more education, more training, more experience versus worker B who doesn't, businesses are going to go to worker A. They're going to say that worker is more productive and we want to retain people who are more productive who can make our business more productive as a result. So ultimately, you're more valuable. You'll get more money. 
<clears throat> and then in general, how does investment in human capital through education affect the likelihood of being unemployed? What's the back half of that look like? So there is a negative relationship between the amount of education people have and the likelihood they'll be unemployed. That is, the more education you have, the less likely you're being unemployed. Again, it's not universal. None of this is universal. It's more just trends. These are like ideal scenarios. Um, as we know, the world's pretty chaotic, so it's not always the case with these type of things. But in a general sense, the more education you have, the more experience, the more training, the more attractive of a candidate you will be. And ultimately, like I said in the previous slide, businesses do look for that, right? They are looking for people who are productive, who have a lot of skills, a lot of training, a lot of ed education, a lot of experience, right? You're more, much more of a uh, attractive worker in their eyes, and you can make their business much more of an asset. So that's all I got for you on income. Again, it's pretty cut and dry. Um, as part of this, I'm kind of trying to tweak things to make sure you guys are actually paying attention to this because ultimately we're really getting to the nuts and bolts of things that I believe would be helpful for you to know going forward. So the jokes are back. Dad joke of the day. And I'm going to make you answer this via Google form. What city do ten dentists love to visit? That would be fabulous Floss Vegas. You're welcome. All right, guys, if you have any questions, please let me know. Um, and I will see you on our Zoom call on Friday, all right? Thanks again.